Good morning. Good morning, church family. Um, I hope you are all doing well this fine, fine morning. A special welcome to those who are joining us for the first time or maybe even joining us on YouTube uh, through the live stream. I'm sure many of you would have seen as you came into the room that there was a little icon or there was a little message on, or, or, or voice that was saying we are live streaming. So we are live streaming on YouTube. So a special welcome to those who are seeing us from there. A special welcome to those who are here on Zoom uh, with us this morning for our service. Um, and we hope that you will have a good time with us and fellowship with us. Uh, my name is Lesejo and I have the privilege of serving the body of Christ through Fellowship City um, as one of the elders with Reino Meyer, sent out from Rooted and PVR as a plurality of elders. Um, we are a um, we are part of the Fellowship Church movement. You'll hear maybe a little bit about that. We are a gospel-centered disciple-making and transcultural family who wants to see the world awaken to the wonder of God and his transcultural church. We are a fellowship group in the heart of Centurion. That's a little bit about who we are, but let's double-click some of those references that you would have heard now. When we say gospel-centered, we mean a life centered and saturated around the truth of the perfect birth, life, death, resurrection, ascension, and return of Jesus Christ, affirming him as Lord and Savior. That means we find salvation, we find meaning, we find purpose, and we find everlasting life in Jesus Christ alone. When we say disciple-making, we mean we are called to follow Jesus and to have our lives transformed by him. We are sent to share his love and to make disciples who make disciples. When we say transcultural, we mean having a view of community that reflects, embraces, and enjoys the diversity of its context. And by the power of the gospel, transcends that to form one new community in Christ. It means we value, we see, we understand, and we enjoy the differences that we have that unite us ultimately to create one new community in Jesus Christ. So what does this actually look like? We believe this looks like gospel-centered disciple-making and transcultural family consisting of missional communities that are committed to living life on life, life in community, and life on mission. And life on mission is key because that is our evangelistic thrust that helps us to always be looking out to reaching the community we're in. So this morning, you're not just gonna see me, you're gonna see a lot of beautiful faces, a um, lot of uh, faces that are gonna bring bringing us more of Jesus Christ. Um, we're gonna see Meryl first up, who's going to lead us in praise and worship. We're gonna have Francois who will be reading God's word for us. Um, followed by Sile, who will be unpacking God's word. So we'll have a little segment where I ask Sile a few questions so that you can get to know a little bit more about him and he can introduce himself. But Sile Tulu will be bringing us God's word this morning. Then we will then have a short break um, where you can grab another cup of tea, another cup of coffee, stretch the legs, and also digest the sermon as Sitle would have brought it to us. Murendeni will be leading that segment, taking some, uh, leading us into the breakouts, giving us those breakout questions that we can use in the breakout rooms, as well as taking the, the feedback from the questions. Then Murendeni will pray for us after the feedback, and then Meryl will lead us in our final song, and I'll send us off with a benediction. So we can be found on the socials. Um, you can find us on fellowshipcity.co.za. Our website is up, it's live. You can find all the information that you need there. You can find all the sermons, audio and visual on our website as well. But you can also find us on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, and you can send us an email at community at Fellowship City. If you wanna know more about us, know more about Jesus, send us an email at community at fellowshipcity.co.za. You can also, grab or, or, or follow up on all the sermons that you might have missed um, through audio podcasts. You can log on to or open your favorite podcasting platform and you will certainly find us there. Uh, I'm going to ask Meryl, who's going to lead us in our time of praise and worship. Um, she will posture us for our time of praise and worship and, and lead us. Thank you, Meryl. Thank you, Lisejo. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Digital. 
<laughs> Praise God that we have these opportunities to um, to still meet uh, and be safe and feel safe in our homes. And, um, it's so beautiful to worship in the congregation. Um, Revelation says of how, like we will, uh, the elders will bow before the Lord and we'll sing holy, 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 and um, a lot of heaven is us just rejoicing and worshiping the Lord through song and through music and through our words. And even though we're sitting at home, I um, just want to encourage you to also just uh, connect your heart and your soul. Maybe put, turn away your phone or it's, and just, and just connect with the Lord today. I'm just going to pray for us. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are always close by. That God the Father, you are always looking at us with love, Lord, and that you are always a good, good Father, Lord, who gives good gifts to, uh, to his children, Lord. God, I thank you for this time that we can have this morning, Lord Jesus. I thank you that we can be connected over space and um, yeah, over time, Lord. And uh, yeah, Lord, I thank you for our fellowship this morning, Lord. I pray, um, yeah, just for hearts to be open to your word, Lord, and to just your unspeakable joy, Lord, um, your joy that gives us strength. And God, that we can also in this time just celebrate the birth of our Savior.
Thank you, Meryl, for leading us in, in praise and worship. Um, thank you so much for leading us in this, in this time. Uh, it was really good to see the word joy in the background there. Um, but thank you for leading us in praise and worship. I did say that uh, Franco would be coming in to, to read God's words to us, but I thought it would be uh, good for us to know a little bit more about Sithi. So Sithi will be sharing God's word with us um, this morning. Um, he will be on screen now. You will be able to see him spotlighted there. So Sithi Tulu is a dear brother in Christ, uh, but I thought it might be good that he tells you a little bit more about himself. Um, so Sithi, I'll ask you um, three questions. Um, so the first question is tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so where are you from? What do you do? Uh, do you have a family? How many wives do you have? Uh, why did you plant the church? Um, the second question is, uh, what are you trusting God for in 2022? And what can we be praying for? Yeah. Um, sure, you're going to have to remind me of the questions. But I, I think the first one is, is about, I, I just heard about the wives. But okay, I think the first one is about, um, uh, yeah, who am I? So obviously here, I, I live in Johannesburg. We live in, 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 in um, Greenstone, around the Greenstone area. I um, have one wife with two kids, um, one girl, uh, Shello, she's four years old, and uh, we have a, a, a boy, um, uh, Uminati, who is um, 18 months old, 18 months old. So we um, sort of, uh, yeah, just uh, four, fa four, four of us, and um, yeah, we live in Johannesburg. Um, I think the second one was about the- Why did you- Plant the church. I think it's always important that we know many wives yeah. in, the, in the context we live in. I think it's a, it's yes. a question. But the second one is, why did you plant the church? Yeah. Um, I mean, to just a summary, like for me, plant church planting is is is, is basically about evangelism. So it's about it, it's about um, how what's the best way to reach people with the gospel. Um, so that's sort of the, the big thing to say, how, how do we reach people with the gospel and make disciples? Because I think that's sort of the main thing. And, the, and, the, and the, the context to do that, the context to make disciples is, is a context of a local church. And therefore, it, it just makes sense that we would, we would plant churches so that we can reach more people with the gospel and more people would be followers of Jesus. So they're basic, that's basically the, the main aim of, of church planting. We love to see people have an encounter with Jesus and, and the best context of that is a local church. Yeah. And what's the name of the church? Um, where were you sent out from? What do you believe in as a church? Yeah. So we, we also part of the fellowship family. Um, we, uh, our church is renewal fellowship. Um, we share, we share a name, we share a name with, with fellowship city. Um, so we were sent out from Ruta fellowship, um, just like fellowship city um yeah and we are in in johannesburg in just on the on the on the east of johannesburg in, in greenstone motorfontein area um and we i mean for 2022 we really uh, believing that god will give us more opportunities for the gospel in the area it's been it's been i mean with the pandemic and everything it's really been difficult to really make a, a, a like a strong connection with with where we are with the community and i think that's what we're praying for that's what we've been really thinking about and praying that how do we make how do we connect to the community how do we um just show that we're here to serve the community and to love them um and therefore that's that's the main that's for us that's the big thing that we're praying about how how do we um how do we connect with the family but i, I think the main also thing if you could pray for us pray for a venue. Uh, we also been struggling to 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 have a venue. I think you also had the same um, issue, and and God came through for you. Um, so we are praying for the same thing. I mean, we've been gathering in the in the afternoons at, at another church. So there's another church that's that's been gracious enough to have us to gather there. But afternoons have been quite difficult, um, and also the place is a bit small. So we really. Uh, praying that that God would would help us to find to find a venue in the area. Thank you. It is it is good to have you here this morning. We hope that this is uh, the first of many many um, because we we share 
um, the same gospel and we believe in the same Jesus Christ. And it's good that you part of the fellowship family and that we can fellowship together this morning. Let me pray for you. After I'm done praying, then Franz was going to come up and read the teaching text of this morning. Then Sitle will take us from there. Let, let's pray, family. Lord, we thank you for Sitle uh, and his family. We thank you for their heart for the gospel. We make disciples, we make disciples where you've placed them. We thank you for the vision that you've implanted in them. We thank you that they're trying to reach an area that you have given them. And we pray that in this new year, as they look forward to more and more opportunities to share the gospel, more and more opportunities to um, speak Christ to the people that are in that area. We pray that you would um, you would reign supreme, that much will be made of you um, wherever you have placed them. Um, we pray for a venue. We pray that you would uh, they would find favor in the doors that they knock on, and we pray for people's hearts that they would engage with, that um, they would be turned to you. I pray this morning for for Sita as he shares um, your word with us. I pray for clarity of thought and speech. I pray for boldness as he shares the gospel, and I pray that you prepare our hearts to hear from you, to be challenged, to be changed to be taught, to be rebuked the way we need to be and to be encouraged in this season. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good morning, everybody. Our teaching passage this morning is Luke 2, verses 1 to 12 in the ESV. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. This is the word of the Lord. And I thank you, Francois, for that reading. Uh, again, thanks, Ulisejo, for the introduction and for the invite to share God's word with you. Again, uh, my name is Sihe. I have a privilege of leading um, a renewal fellowship, a church plant in, in, um, in Johannesburg, in the east of Johannesburg, in, in, in Greenstone area. It's been um, really uh, uh, just a great time for us to plant and see what God is doing and um, and also to see what God is doing with you at Fellowship City and therefore I'm, I'm really glad to share God's word with you. I do understand that you've been doing a series on Advent it just like us and many parts of uh, the church across the world the season of Advent as we count down to, to Christmas um, and thinking about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ I thought what I will do as we begin um, our, our sermon today is to really sort of gauge where we are at this morning. And therefore, I'll, I'll, if I think there's, there'll be a drawing that be up there, and I like us to to look at it and think about what will um, what will this drawing? I mean, you see here at different cars. I think it's like nine cars. Um, they're in different states. Um, so what I like us to think about as you look into these cars which car would mostly describe you right now? Um, I mean, as you can see, there's a, there's a car that's, you know, fireworks, it's joy, it's all good. There's a car that's, the engine is sort of burning. There's a car that's it's sort of tripping, it's about to fall off. There's a car that's, that has a puncture. 
um, the wheel as a punch, I was the one with he carrying a heavy load. Just as you look into these cars, which one would you think sort of describes you right now? Give us a second to think about that. Yeah, I think, and, and the reason why I, I do this, thanks, thanks, Lesejo, for that. I think it, it's good for us to get into God's word, bringing our honest selves. It's, it's good to, to come to God's word and, and asking for God to speak to us, saying to, to God, this is, this is where I am. This is, this is where I am right now. I'm feeling heavy. I feel like like that car that is just, everything is just blowing up. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I'm about to, to fall off. Um, this is where I am. And Lord, I'm coming as, um, you know, as, as, as where I am right now. And would you speak to me? Specifically because it's been a tough season for most of us. It's been a tough season. It's been a tough year. In this past two years from 2020, 2021 hasn't been much different. It's just been so difficult. And as the year ends, as the year ends, some of us are asking us difficult questions about life, about faith, um, just because this is, this is where we are. We're coming face to face with our expectations versus our reality. That's actually what happens most of the time towards the end of the year. As we look to um, the year ending and thinking through, have, did I make any progress this year? You know, this is what I expected to happen this year. Most of us, or many of us had a lot of expectations this year, but now the year's almost over and, and there's a sense of, um, for some of us, even despair could creep in uh, because there's a, there are certain um, sort of expectations we had for the year and they didn't come, they didn't happen, they didn't come to pass. And again, there could be that, that despair creeping in to say, yeah, here's another year that has gone by and I didn't achieve this, this didn't happen. You know, for some of us thought that by the end of this year, you know, we will be better financially, we will be in a, in a better space. For some of us, maybe our marriage would have been, you know, in a good space. Our, you know, relationships would have been in a good space. Um, all of those things, maybe it would be it, it, uh, a behavior, you know, a sinful behavior that you thought it would have uh, sort of shaken off this year, but it's still there. All of those things, as the year ends, um, it can bring some thoughts. It can bring some some sort of even crisis for some of us um, to think, am I growing in my spiritual life? Am I growing in just my life generally? Is, um, am I moving forward? And for some of us, those questions does lead to some sort of crisis. What's really happening in my life? And what I've really come to understand, specifically for those questions, for, for deep questions like that, even for People are not Christians. Uh, their main question would be the existence of God. That, is God there? But for, for some of us who are Christians, the, the question might not be like that. But the deep question for most of us is, is God in my everyday life? Is God in the midst of this? Whatever the midst of this is for you. You know, the mundaneness of your life, your ordinary life, your everydayness of your life. Is God part of that? Is God working in your life? And what happens as we come towards Christmas, as we come towards this year, I mean, the, the end of the year, it may feel a bit, this season of, of Christmas, this, this season may feel a bit um, sort of not real. You know, it, it can feel meaningless because there's a sense of, you know, we are in the pandemic, all of these things that are happening, but now we have to pause all of that and have this Christmas spirit and have this joy uh, because we are in this festive season and press pause to the realness of what's happening in our lives because of what, because of the Christmas period and then we'll press play again in in Jan. And therefore, sometimes this period, and, and even as we speak about Advent, as we speak about the coming of Jesus, for some of us, it may feel very abstract. It may feel very far from what's happening in our lives, which is why I like Advent. It's why I like the way, the, the approach of Advent. Now, Advent is not just a, 
a fancy way of talking about Christmas or talking about the Christmas period. It's actually a different approach altogether. Advent is meant to put us in touch with our deepest longings, with our deepest hopes and, and, and our desires. Anticipating, it, 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 it is, it's supposed to give us this sense of anticipating someone, something that is coming to change our lives completely. As it's talking about the advent of Jesus, the coming of Jesus, but also anticipating his second coming. That's what Advent does. Advent is, is supposed to give us a posture of waiting, a posture of anticipating, a posture of longing. What do we do with our longings? What do we do with our hopes? Now, you've been looking at Advent through uh, different themes as a church. I think you started with hope. You, and then you, you came in with peace. And today we're talking about, we're talking about joy. We're talking about joy. In fact, for our passage, uh, I'm just going to uh, focus on, on verse 9 and 10. Let me just grab my Bible quickly. I'm going to focus on verse 9 and 10, which says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day, instead of David, a savior, who is Christ the Lord. Who is Christ the Lord. Now, I have to admit that in light of everything that's happening uh, around us, the pandemic, uh, the, you know, and everything that has happened because of the pandemic, um, anxiety that we live with, mental health issues that are among us, it almost feels like you know, we're moving from trial to trial, we're moving from another problem to another problem. All of these things are just happening around us. And the idea of preaching a sermon about joy can feel far and foreign. You know, I, I feel that myself. Um, and for some, of, some, for some people can even think that it's a bit insensitive, insensitive or even careless to talk about joy as we're going through this. At the risk of that, at the risk of being insensitive or, or careless, our text today um, asks ask us a question or beg us to ask questions about joy. You know, our, our, our text today claims that the, the news of the Messiah coming, the news of Jesus coming into the world are news of great joy, a good news of great joy. Now, the big questions for us this morning, uh, I want to frame everything through these questions. What does it look like to have joy after a year like 2021? After a year like this. Now, obviously, for some of us, it might have a great year, and, and that's great. But what does it look like for us to have joy after a year we've just had? What does it look like to have lasting, defiant joy? Where, what does it look like? And where does that joy come from? And then how can we have joy in the midst of the world filled with brokenness, injustice, disease, and unrest? That's, that's sort of the, I know these questions are, more, are, are the same, but that's, that's how I'm framing this. What does it look like for us to have joy in the midst of chaos, of brokenness, of injustice, of disease, of pandemic, of unrest? And where does that joy come from? Now, to answer these questions, um, we will have to try and really define what joy is. We have to really grapple with what is joy. Now, there could be different understandings of joy. Um, and for some of us, we might be aware that joy is not necessarily happiness. Obviously, there's a link there, but it's not necessarily happiness. Happiness could be described as, as a moment of gladness, a moment something has happened, a moment of gladness could be, could be happiness, uh, while joy is, might be deeper than that. Joy might be a longing being fulfilled. It's something that's more deeper. It's, it's, it's a, it could be a longing more fulfilled. Now, let me make an example. It, 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 it could be, think of a single person who's been longing to get married, you know, a single person who's been longing to get married. And finally, they, you know, someone comes along their way and they have a date and all of those things. And let's say in that relationship, 
you know, everything's going well, that they say their first date or, or, or those things, or they starting to chat and, and meet up and things are going well. And the person is happy. The person is happy because, you know, they're calling one another, all of those things, that person is happy with what's happening. But on the wedding day, when they get married, it won't just be happiness. It won't just be their dating happiness or he called, she called, all of that. It would be something deeper. It would be joy because finally it has happened. Whatever they've been longing for, finally it's been fulfilled. And that's what joy, that's what joy is. It's, it's something that's deeper than just a moment of gladness. So that's, that's how we're looking at joy. But also there could be another way of looking at joy. Another way of looking at joy, I, I'm thinking of it through one theologian called Willie J James Jennings, when he said, joy is a work. It is a work of resistance against despair and its forces. It is a work that can become a state, that can become a way of life. Now, what Willie Jennings is saying, he's saying joy, it's, it's something that is a constant act of work, a posture, a work, something we work towards, of a resistance. It's a, it's a defiance. It's a, it's a resistance against despair. Resistance against despair and its forces. Despair comes with different things, anxiety, all of these things, fear, all of these things that comes with despair. And it's this work that leads us into a state of joy, that leads us into a way of life. Now, these are the handles that I want us to have, to hold on to as we talk about joy. We're talking about a, a sort of a, a, a longing that's been fulfilled. We're talking about a work that is a resistance towards a, a, a despair. Now, what we see in our text today, firstly in verse nine, an angel of the Lord appeared to, 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 this, to these shepherds and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not. Now, just on an information level, it, it, it's so good to see the text actually debunking, you know, our version of what angels are, around, are about. You know, the, what we see here are these shepherds, an angel comes through, and they are terrified. I think that it, de it debunks the way we think of angels, because sometimes we think of angels as just these fluffy, cute beings with wings. You know, if the angel shows up, you know, you just sort of you hug the angel or something. But this is not what we see here. You know, we see an angel that is terrifying. The angel shows up, the angel shows up, and, and if they are terrified, the angel has to say, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. They are filled with great fear. And they had to be come down saying, the angel saying, fear not. Now, here's what I want to put for us as our, as, as our first point. The first thing is, I, I would like to put it to us that the first thing about the path of joy or a path to joy, a path to joy is on the other side of fear. This is what we see on the text. It says here, they were, they were filled with great fear. The angel said to them, fear not, fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy. The path to joy is on the other side of fear. Now, there are numerous times in, in the biblical narrative where God's people are commissioned to do something, they are told to do something, and they are afraid. They, they are afraid and they are told again and again not to be afraid. When God calls them into a different direction of what will eventually bring them joy, what will eventually bring God's people into where God is leading them, but they have to be told not to be afraid. We see this a lot of times where when the supernatural meets the natural. Here we see an angel meeting the shepherds where, where supernatural being is meeting the natural. When the, 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 the divine breaks in into the humanity, people are told not to be afraid. We see in the Old Testament, Moses meeting with God in the burning bush. He was also told not to be afraid. Same with Joshua, same with, with others who are told, do not be afraid. The pathway to joy is on the other side 
of fear. I'm actually comforted by these words that are, you know, that, that, that these, these shepherds are told, do not fear. Because of the sense that they tell us, and we see that throughout the scriptures, when this command of not to be afraid, they tell us that God does not qualify us because of our fear. In fact, he understands our fear, which is why he, he, he commissions us and then commands us not to be afraid. He understands our fear. He understands our fear. Having said that, the thing is, if we live primarily out of fear, to so say if we have this fear, we, we can live in a, in a defensive posture. You know, that's what fear does. We, it makes us to live in a defensive posture. We, we retrieve inward. We value safety and security. We value self above everything else. And if we, if we live like that, if we live based on fear, then we will probably just save ourselves from trials, save ourselves from embarrassment, save ourselves from disappointment, and we will insulate ourselves from the possibility of divine joy. We will insulate ourselves. We will put ourselves away from the path of joy because joy is on the other side of fear. And therefore, it, it, it begs for us to ask ourselves, are we living in this fear? Because if we are, we're putting ourselves away from this path leading to joy. If we look closely at our text, the shepherds are, are told, there's a sense that they are told to, to trade their great fear with the great joy. They were filled. That's the, that's the, the sort of uh, Luke here is playing with these words of, of, of in the Greek, there's this, uh, it, it, it says they were filled with mega fear, the mega, the great fear. And the angel said, fear not, behold, I have this good news of mega joy. He's sort of playing with these words of great fear and great joy. He wants them to trade their great fear with great joy. Now, that's something we can do in this moment. The, the, the text is merely showing us that the pathway, the pathway to joy is the trading of fear with joy. Again, understanding what joy is. Understanding this is not just to say, you know, just, just be happy. No. This is a conscious decision to work. Remember this... Uh, joy can be a work to work to resist the forces that comes with despair or the despair and its forces as a defiance to work to 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 live a life that is in defiance with despair and its forces and that happens on the other side of fear fear not for i give you good news of great joy trade your fear with this deep joy. Secondly, the pathway of joy is tied in with the embrace of the beautiful story of what God has done in Jesus. That's, that's where the pathway of joy is tied in. The pathway of joy is tied in the gospel. So this is my second point, which is what we see on our text. It says, do not fear, I bring you good news. I bring you good news of great joy for all people, for unto you born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. Great joy is linked with good news here. Do not be afraid. Trade your, trade your fear with joy. Why? Because we have good news for you. Because we have good news for you. And in this news, and for us who are Christians, we are aware of this good news. We are aware of what God has done in the person and the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. And here we've been introduced to that. There is be of, of cheer. Have some great joy because we have good news. And in this news, something has happened as a result of which the world is will be in a different place. This is what the coming of the Messiah is about. This is what Advent is about. The coming of Jesus. The coming of Jesus is bringing, ushering a new kingdom. A kingdom that will change everything. The kingdom that will give us joy. The kingdom that will give us peace. The 
kingdom that was give us hope. In the coming of the Messiah, there's an inauguration of this kingdom. That is the good news. Now, the, 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 the good news of this gospel comes in a context. It's not just, you know, uh, good news that no, has no backstory. The reason why this is great joy, especially for the, for, the, for the people of Israel at that time, is the news of this Messiah. It is saying here, a Messiah born in the city of, of, J, of David, the Savior, the one who will rescue his people. It's coming in. That's because there's a backstory. The, 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 the Christian story claims that this world is in a different place, in a different way, not because of Augustus, what we saw there with Augustus, but because of Jesus, not because of, of the great affairs of state, of state in, the, in the Roman world at that time. Things are not changing because of that. Things are changing because of this Messiah who is born. The Jewish people of, of the first century at the time, they were expect, expecting that their God will come back in a person to rescue them, that he will reveal his glorious presence, he will de defeat their enemies, he will reestablish them as his people once and for all. That was their hope. They were hoping for a new exodus, that there will be a repeat performance, as it were, of what happened 15, 1,500 years earlier when the Israelites had been enslaved in Egypt and their God came to rescue them. He had to, to overcome the powerful Egyptian rulers. He liberated his people. He led them in person through the desert, the Sinai Desert, to bring them in the promised land. And many prophets after that, they had said that one day, something like that exodus will happen again. Someone that rescue like Moses will come again to rescue his people. They were hoping for a new age of justice, a new age of peace. Ancient scriptures had spoken a time where in Isaiah it says, a wolf will lie down with the lamb, the mountains will drip with sweet wine. And the earth will be filled with the knowledge and the glory of God as the waters, like the waters covering the sea. They've been longing for that, the new exodus, for this time where shalom will reign in this world. And all these hopes are wrapped up in this Messiah who's been born. All these hopes, all of these dreams, as it were, are wrapped up in this person of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus, all these hopes are now being fulfilled, but not just for Israel. It says for all people. This is good news of great joy for all people. We all are receiving a rescuer. We all are part of the story of this new kingdom that is ushering in. And therefore, it is good news. It is good news. The one who will come and, and inaugurate a new humanity has come. This new community of God's people from every tribe, every nation. He has come in the person of Jesus. And the pathway to joy is being caught up in that story. The pathway to, do, to joy is being wrapped up in, to be caught up in that story. There you will find great joy. It's either that, it's either you are wrapped up in the story of the Messiah and what he has come to do, this kingdom that is ushering in, being part of that, or you will have to scramble with the happiness that this world is trying to give to us. This fragile happiness that we see in our culture today. And fortunately, the way we are living in right now with this pandemic, with everything, we live in a time that, that the unveiling of how fragile this happiness the world is giving us. The cultural happiness that we see has been shown for what it truly is, that it, that it, that it, that it is fragile. It, it's not there. Cultural happiness is actually when we get what we want. 
you know, that sort of uh, the, the happiness that is there, that is out there, when we get what, it, what we want with God being excluded. And that is temporary, that is tran transient, it moves away, it breaks apart as we see in these days. The things that we thought bring us joy. Much of us, we, many of us, we thought that we, 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 we can just get joy and happiness through meaningful careers, through ease, through provision, through securities, through all of these things. But those things are being stripped away and happiness has been shattered and people are scrambling to find happiness, to find joy, lasting joy. But for us who are wrapped up in the story, joy is part of this kingdom. Joy is part of what it means to be people in this kingdom. To be wrapped up in this story is a pathway to joy. And it makes us not to be like the world that is scrambling for happiness outside God. That is happiness that is outside. I like how, how John Piper puts this as he talks about joy and the world. He says, if it were not for the death of Jesus in our place, if it was not for the gospel, if it were not for the death of Jesus in our place, the only possible joy would be the joy of delusion. Like the joy on the Titanic just before it hit the iceberg. Without the cross, joy could be sustained only by denying the ine inevitable divine judgment. In fact, that's the kind of joy that drives most of the world. A joy that preserves the power of its pleasures by being oblivious to the peril just ahead. If the passengers were suddenly made aware that in a matter of hours, most of them would drown in an icy ocean, all their merrymaking would cease. Their joy depends on their ignorance. Now, John Piper is talking about the way the world looks at joy, the way the world approaches joy. They have blocked themselves of what God is doing in this world and what's coming in the, in, at the end. They are saying, we're not worried about that. We're going to have all we want right now. Their joy depends on ignorance of what God is doing. But for us, we have the gospel and the gospel is telling us what God is doing, is, is doing in the world. He has broke in through the birth and the life of Jesus. And our life is secured and we can have everlasting joy. We don't have to, you know, have, have be ignorant in what's to come. We can know what's to come and still have joy because we are secured in the gospel. That's what's happening right now in the world. And we are awakened to that. We are awakened that the nature of things, the way we thought they are in terms of where we get our, our happiness or our joy, that's not where we put our hope in. Our hope is wrapped up, our, our joy is wrapped up in the story, in the story of the Messiah who has come. We need a deeper joy. And the deeper joy is connected to a deeper story. That joy will see us through. That joy will see us through. In fact, joy can be, as much as we said, joy is a longing fulfilled, a joy is a work, but also joy is a strength. A joy is something that, 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 that takes us through life. I like what Nehemiah says in Nehemiah 8 verse 10. When he's speaking to God's people, he said, it says in Nehemiah 8.10, Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to, to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, let me give a, a bit of context here, because I think it is important. The, the people of Israel at this time, they, they've been in exile and now they are just back there to rebuild their city. Their city has been in, completely shattered. They haven't had the word from God because they've been away. They haven't heard the word of the Lord for a number of years. And now they are rebuilding this, their city as it were. And Ezra, in chapter 8, he opens up God's word and starts reading God's word to them. And they just start weeping. 
They start weeping upon hearing God's word because they haven't heard God's word in a while. And Nehemiah comes in and says, this is not a time to grieve. This is not a time to be weeping. It is time for us to have joy. It is a time for us to, to have joy. It, this joy, it will be through this joy that we will be able to rebuild the city. This joy will be our strength in what we are about to do. He's saying the joy of the Lord is our strength. That, that's what joy is again. A joy, again, it, 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 it just, it's not just a, a longing being fulfilled. It's not just a work. All of these things are true, but also it is a strength. It is a strength for God's people. In times of despair and difficulty, joy can be a currency that flows in the community of God's people to give them strength. Joy can be this currency that we're passing to one another as we give one another strength in times of despair and difficulty. One of the strongest things that keeps the community together, do we have a currency of joy that we can pass around to one another? Joy can be a currency that flows. God's people had joy because they anticipated a time when the promised Messiah, in the Old Testament, they, 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 they were to have joy because the promised Messiah will come. Isaiah 35 verse 10 says, it says, those people, it says, those people, those who have been ransomed by the Lord will enter Jerusalem singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Sorrow and mourning will disappear and they will be filled with joy and gladness. Isaiah is prophesying about the time of the coming of the Messiah. He said, when the Messiah comes, those who've been ransomed by the Lord, their mourning will disappear. They will be filled with joy. But also in, in, in Habakkuk 3, verse 17 and 8, it talks about that this joy is even meant to be with us, even through our sorrows. It says, now Habakkuk, if you know with Habakkuk, there was, Habakkuk here is, is talking about God's people going through a rough time, a rough, rough time. And, he's, and, and, and the, at the end of all of that, Habakkuk says, though the fig tree should not blossom, Though there be no fruit on the vine, though there's nothing fruitful happening around us, though the, the yield of, of, of the olive should fail, yet I will exult in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. It's an intentional posture. Though everything is happening that is around me is not bearing fruit, though it feels like I'm moving backwards, though as the year ends and it feels like nothing much has been accomplished, yet I will exult in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Today, a joy is anchored that God fulfilled his promise. Habakkuk and Isaiah and all of them, they were looking forward when this happened, when the Messiah comes. For us, with the, with the advent of Jesus, our joyful anticipation has come. Our, our, the, 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 all of these things that have been spoken to where joy will come, it has come in the person of Jesus. And it is important to remember that the joy we have in Christ is not seasonal, is not situational. Like the joy of the, the, the ancient Israelites, our joy is a response to what God has already done in Christ and what he continues to do. He has already ushered in the kingdom that it has its fruits. That one of the fruits of this kingdom is a fruit of joy. Now, here's what we need to understand. And, and, and it's good for us to even understand where we are in terms of redemptive history. And that will help us even with the tensions that we feel. Now, the, 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 the Jewish people, or they, they knew that the world is, uh, works in two ways, or the world is divided into two. We have an age right now that we are living in right now, and we have an age to come. The age that we are living in right now is filled with sorrow, is filled with, 
with, with pain, with all of these things. But the Messiah will come or someone will come who will usher in a new age. There's a new age that is coming where our, our tears will be wiped away, where all of these things, we, we, we will have peace and shalom finally. Right now we live in this age, but there will be an age to come. These two ages. But what the Christian faith brings in and what the coming of the, the, coming of the Messiah brings in is that the new age that is to come has been brought in into this age. Has been brought in into this age in, and it has inaugurated, the new age has inaugurated not in its fullness, so we're not just going to have everything. It has not come in its fullness, but it has started. We are having the drizzles or what, what I could say, the, the, um, you know, when the rain is just starting to trickle down, the, the, just the start of the rain, not the full rain. We, we, we're getting the glimpses, the foretaste of the, of, the, of the coming kingdom. So even the joy that we will have in the new age, we can start to have now, as, but our joy will still be have a bit of sorrow. We will still have sorrow. We will still have th this thing that is promised in the new age, but it, they will be mixed up with what's happening in, the, in this age, which is, which is what actually happens for most of us. There's a sense that we have a presence of God, we're in the presence of God, and we feel with so much joy. But at the same time, there's still these nagging things happening in our life. There's still these sorrows. There's still this tension that we're living. We are living in the tension of the new age and the age that is here right now. We're going to experience joy, but we're not going to experience it in its fullness because we'll only experience everything in its fullness about this kingdom where finally the Lord Jesus Christ comes and makes all things new. But right now the kingdom has started. We can experience the joy. We can experience the joy. And this kind of joy is grounded in the thankfulness for the advent of Jesus, that Jesus has come. And we are looking towards his second coming. And we can be people of joy. So today our joy is fueled by the Holy Spirit and it's what God uses to spread his, his message or his, his love towards throughout the world. He has given us this, he has wrapped us up in this message or this story of what he's doing in this world. And now we need to be conduits of this joy in this world. True biblical joy is what, God, is what God calls us to. He calls us to this joy. It is a joy that endures, whether in, it's, it's in this good times of Christmas or in the, in the low times, post-holidays, post-December, in January, or whatever is happening. This joy will endure or should endure all of that. And the question for us as we close how do you rekindle this joy? How do you once again get back to this joy? There's a sense that for, for most of us who've been Christians, we, ex we have experienced this joy. This joy brought by the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. This joy of being in Christ. But right now for some of us it has fizzled, fizzled and it's almost like a, a long time ago. We don't even know where last we had this deep joy because of Jesus. I will invite us to rekindle this joy by looking once again at the wonder of the inca incarnation, at the wonder of God being come, of coming as flesh, which is what we see in this text. This is what, the, this is what the, they're celebrating, that the Messiah has come. And the, and the invitation is for us to be filled with wonder once again that God has come in the flesh. God has come near us. God has come near us in the person of Jesus. But for those of us who might not know the Lord Jesus, the pathway to joy is to first being wrapped up, being first being part of this story that God has sent his son 
the Lord Jesus Christ to live the life that we should have lived, but we could not live. The perfect life, obedient to the Lord, obedient to God. Jesus has come and lived that life perfectly, but he has died the death that we should have died. Taking our sin, taking the justice of God that we deserved, Jesus has taken that. And he died the death that we should have died, but he also was risen up. He was taken up. He resurrected with new life. And the new life he gives to us, the new life he invites us to, the new life that includes joy. If you don't know Christ, would you put your faith in him and be part of this story of God's people who are in this kingdom and this kingdom is the kingdom of people who are filled with joy. But if you already know the Lord, would you, especially around this time, fill yourself with wonder once again of what God has done. God has sent his son in the person of Jesus. He has given us a savior, a rescuer. We are part of this new exodus. Would you have this wonder once again? Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you that your word brings life. Thank you that your word brings peace. I pray for those of us who have had a tough year, things have just not gone our way. We feel like um, thinking about joy, talking about joy is just something that's far and foreign. Lord, I pray that you would, by your spirit, the joy that you would give us this joy that is supernatural, this joy that uh, surpasses all understanding. Give us this joy, we pray, and let that joy be our strength because we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you. We thank you that um, at least one time a year we get to focus purely and solely on the story of your birth. Um, the story of uh, Jesus being sent as a gift to us. Um, as we go through the season of Advent, Lord, as a church, we went through the hope, we, we experienced the peace and the joy, Lord. And so we thank you, Father. Um, thank you for um, giving us this community. Thank you for, uh, despite the difficulties um, of, of, of the pandemic and 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 um, illnesses and people not being well, we have the space to digitally meet and be encouraged and, and hear the teaching of your word and, 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 and uh, figuratively break bread and just fellowship and be in community. So I thank you, Lord, for, for every person and every family that's represented in this frame, in the frames, um, in the Zoom call, Lord. We thank you that you're a God who knows our cries, who hears our cries, um, and so, Heavenly Father, uh, you know, Sitha mentioned this morning that the, the, the message of joy during these times can be insensitive, Lord. And that's because of some of the difficulties that people are experiencing. And so this morning, Father, I pray for many of us, it might not feel like joy is what we are experiencing, that you may meet us where we are, Lord, um, that you may comfort us, that you may give us, give us your presence, Lord. I pray that as a people that we may experience you and that we may experience your love. Where it may not feel like hope, peace, and joy are reality for us in our circumstances, Lord, I pray, I pray that we may hold out hope. We may pray for peace and pray for joy, Father. So we thank you, Lord God. We, 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 we thank you that we do have hope in Jesus Christ. Ultimately, that's the only reason, like John Piper said, where it's, it's not like we're ignorant and the Titanic is about to sink. And when we find out it's about to sink, then we're all in despair. No, our hope is in Jesus Christ, that regardless of what our circumstances, that there is hope, that the one who created us and the one who loves us can be with us in the difficult circumstances, can be with us when we don't know what to say, do or pray. 
And so we thank you, Lord. We praise you, Father. And so we pray for our nation during this time, Lord, as the Omicron variant is, is continuing to, 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 to make its rounds, Lord, as, as, as we're figuring out, as scientists are figuring out what this means. We pray, we continue to pray for healthcare workers, for hospitals, for those in the front lines, Heavenly Father, those in our church who are in the front lines, Lord Jesus. We lift them up to you. We lift up their families to you. We pray that you may cover them and protect them, Lord Jesus. We pray for wisdom from, from our leaders, Lord, in the country. We pray um, that you may give them the ability to, to, to know what's, what's, what are the best decisions to be taken, Heavenly Father. And for those of us, while we're waiting, while, while in the midst of the unknown, we pray that you may also continue to be with us. We pray journey mercies for people who are traveling during this festive season, Lord Jesus. And we pray that you may just continue to be with us and allow us to experience you. We thank you for Sithle. We pray a prayer of blessing over his family um, during this time, over their church, Lord Jesus. May you continue to be with them. Um, we pray for, 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 for all the prayer requests they've made, Lord, uh, the, 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 the praying for a venue and a facility at your timing, Lord. May you come through. And so be with us this morning, we pray. Um, we pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Amen, amen. Amen. I was in the group with, um, with Sonnery and we were just saying that, sure, the sermon, there were so many, it, it's not just like truth bombs, it's these like revelations that um, I experienced. I've read that passage of scripture so many times, but just that exchange of fear and joy and just so many things that um, you said, Cicely. So thank you for your obedience in bringing the word. And your Mo saying thank you for that beautiful prayer as well. Let's sing the last song. Oh, come, holy faithful. Immortal gladness is supposed to be so. Amen.
Thank you, Meryl, for leading us. Um, Christ is Lord. Christ is Lord indeed. Um, thank you so much. We end off every service with a benediction, uh, meaning a good word uh, to send us out into this new week. And today our benediction is from Romans 15, verse 13. And it reads as follows. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning for our service. Um, I pray that you have a good week further. See you all next week online. Um, grace, peace, and joy to you all.